Today we are going to use up all of our scrap fabric that we've been collecting for a really long time and we're going to make a rag rug. Can you see this? It's super soft and kind of quirky and uh, colorful or you can make it not colorful, whatever you like. Um, join us, won't you? Hi, welcome to another Mumsy video. Uh, today we're going to learn how to get rid of a lot of scrap fabric and uh, make a rag rug. So. I thought I'd show you a few of the ones that I've made first before I show you how to make one. This one is in my daughter's room, DJ Girl's room, and it is only made with a sort of non-fraying knit fabric, but it doesn't need to be. I also finished the back on this one. You can see there's plastic on the back of this one. And so it doesn't slide around quite as much as the other one, but it looks kind of neat. <laughs> you can see through it anyway. Um, next, we'll head downstairs and see the uh, rag rug that I have down there. Okay, here we are in the laundry room. And you can see right in front of the washer dryer here, there's another rag rug that I've made. This one features all sorts of fabric. So cottons, satins, knits, fleece, all sorts of things. And it's pretty flattened. But as you see, it's not quite big enough for the front of my washer dryer here. So I want to make a bigger one. So that is what we're going to start with today. I'm going to show you the one that I'm currently working on and what it takes to make them. Okay, so there are a few things you're going to need to make a rag rug. This is the one that I've started. It's super big, so it'll fit in that spot where the uh, washer and dryer are. So first, you'll need some of this non... I found out what this is. It is non-slip rug, like the underneath of a rug if you want your rug not to slip, you can buy this stuff to put underneath it. It looks like a grid. Um, also, you know when you do rug hooking, you can also use that stuff. Anything with a grid that has this. This is a bit rubbery, so it's nice because when you tie it, it uh, the carpet won't move quite as much. And then you won't have to finish the bottom. Um, whatever size. I found you can buy this stuff at furniture stores. Um, I saw it at what my kids call the ducky store. Um, it's a, a Yisk, I think. They have some of this stuff that you can buy by the uh, meter. And of course, you're gonna need, let me see here, oh, this, a giant, bag of scraps <laughs> and it doesn't matter what kind of fabric it uh, can be fleece I've got knit in here I've got cottons I've even got some of this stuff here let me get the camera and I'll show you you can see this stuff is um I made it Tinkerbell fabric uh, it's a uh, that'll work there's some corduroy in there some fleece anything you like scissors are a must and uh, I don't use one of those rug hooking things because it's a bit thicker um, but I'm sure they would work as well so the first thing we need to do is decide how big of a carpet we want and then cut the rubbery grid stuff to that size then of course we need the fabric to put onto the rug and that is where these come in I have different bags because at one point I was going to do a rainbow and I had the bags color coordinated this one says green this one says yellow brown 
Anyway, I like to cut mine pretty uniform, so I usually cut my scrap fabrics into little squares first. You can see there, there's a whole lot of different ones here. I have some velour, some cottons, some kind of flannelette stuff, with cows on it. <laughs> Got a little bit of what is this? Uh, micro suede, maybe? A faux micro suede, I think that is. Some sort of cheap something. <laughs> anyway, so we've cut those into that and then I cut them into strips. So the strips look something like this. You know, about a half an inch, even smaller, by, you know, four, what is that, four or five inches? Just enough so that when you tie them, they'll be. Uh, they'll look, you know, they'll come up about that far. Um, if you want a longer one, then these need to be longer and shorter. I would recommend just keeping it this length. You can always give your carpet a trim after, but you need a little bit of grip so that you'll be able to tie these properly. So I do it as I go along. You don't have to have everything ready right away. I tend to, you know, when my uh, scrap bin gets out of, uh, out of control like it is now, I start cutting the squares up and then I save them like this until I need them and then I cut them into strips. Um, whatever you like. I'm not sure of the exact amount of strips you'll need for uh, your rug, but a lot. <laughs> That's all I can say is a lot. You will get rid of so much scrap fabric. It'll be fantastic. <laughs> oh my gosh, can you see this view? I'm wearing my GoPro on the little head cam thing that I have and it's a little crazy. But I think you guys can see really well what I'm going to do. You have a mumsy eye view, if you will. So, um, I've started already, so I'm not going to show you like up where I am, but I basically go row to row, um, row by row, and I will show you once you've got them cut into little strips, I will show you how to tie them. Now it's the same as rug hooking, I believe. So basically fold the strip in half. You've got this long strip, fold it in half. It doesn't matter if it's right sides or wrong sides facing because it'll all show. Then I kind of fold it again in half just to pinch this like middle. And you pick where you want to tie it and put it through. And then open it up in the middle there and pull it through. Ta-da, that's it. And you keep going. So we're going to do that again. Fold it in half. Kind of pinch this middle. Pick the one beside it here. <laughs> and you pull it through. Open up this middle. And stick it through. And pull. Very simple, and you just keep going row to row to row to row. Um, this stuff is uh, really great because you can take markers and just kind of color coordinate um, a pattern on it. That's what I did with my son's rug. It um, has his name on it, so I would I just colored the letters that I wanted um, on here where I wanted and then I only tied that certain color onto those um, ones that I'd color coded and then the background I did all in one color blue so the uh, letters stood out really well and what I did was I used some uh, neon type um, jogging fleece to do the letters so it looked really great. <laughs> I wish I could show you but we have rules and then I'm going to stick with them. I'm not going to be a bad mumsy. So uh, yeah and see though those were cotton. I have 
let's see here I have some that are knit and it doesn't matter which way which which grain you uh, do them in it works all the same I recommend if you're doing a uh, denim possibly um, denim or like this corduroy here was a bit thicker so it was a little harder to knot so um, you can cut those a little bit smaller but the fleece is super soft um, knits are super soft they're pretty easy to knot um, properly and that's it you just keep going um, this head cam you can kind of see what I'm seeing did you see my pego card over there <laughs> interesting isn't it <laughs> not really but anyway um, <laughs> that's to take the bus in Winnipeg if you wanted to know what that card is for <laughs> I don't think it's any use for anything else but anyway you can uh, sit here and watch me drink my slurpee while I uh, mm. well I make a little note on the back um, when it's done you can leave the back as it is it won't matter too much you can just lay it out ha as is or as you saw at the beginning with my daughters I put just um, a clear plastic uh, you can get that kind of um, clear vinyl that they use at the fabric store for like uh, uh, covering tables and things or like this table you can see here can you see my cat over there? <laughs> She's trouble. She's peeking at me. Anyway, <laughs> you can see this vinyl would work too. Um, put it on the wrong side so that the pretty side is facing the back underneath. And just use some pretty duct tape. And duct tape it down onto it. It seems to work fine as well. But it's not really needed. And, uh there you have it I hope uh, this short video was enough instruction for you um, I might link to the blog post I did on the scrap rug years and years ago um, in the description below just in case you need a little bit more picture stuff I might actually transfer that over to my uh, website first but anyway uh, <laughs> I hope you liked uh, if you did please like please subscribe uh, comment on I I really would love to know how much of a scrap pile you have is it huge like do you see mine there really big <laughs> anyway I don't know some people have more than that I would like to know and if you have pictures or video I would love to see it <laughs> completely I'm kind of a uh, kind of shameless when it comes to that I love to see all that kind of stuff so uh, comment with that and uh, click the bell you know the drill and how do you do this bye bye for now